It's been a long time, but we're back at the shop at Bike Bros in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. Today, we're going to be looking at the 2024 Giant Stance 29-2. This is Giant's most affordable full suspension trail bike. It is a new design for 2024. Still looks pretty familiar compared to the old design, but there have been some notable upgrades which I think is going to put the stance at the absolute top of the best budget value full suspension trail bike for the 2024 year. Stick with me. I'm going to show you all of the features, uh, what some of those features mean as far as benefits as we talk about the 2024 Giant Stance 29-2. More to come in just a second. So a quick overview of the numbers on this Giant Stance 29. First number, that 29, doesn't have to be 29. They make the stance in both 27 and a half and 29 inch wheels. This is a 29er we're looking at. 29ers are available in medium, large, and extra large. We're looking in particular at a medium and a 29er today. But in the 27 and a half inch wheeled version of this bike, which is virtually identical with the exception of wheel size and of course the frame size that'll go along with it. Uh, in that 27 and a half inch version, there are sizes down from extra small up to large. So in medium and large, customers will actually get a choice of either wheel size with other parts of the frame fit being virtually identical between 27.5 and 29 with the exception of the 27.5 will have an ever so slightly shorter chainstay on there. So if you're in that medium and large size and wondering which way to go, I would say for most people, it makes sense to go with 29. It's gonna be a little bit faster and smoother, but if somebody's looking for a bike that they wanna be extra playful, uh, the 27.5 version of the bike um, could be a consideration. And the one thing that'll happen, going back to numbers again, in this 29 inch version, we're looking at 2.4 inch wide tires. On the 27 and a half inch version, they go with 2.6 inch tires. So that's taking a little bit of the sort of plus tire theory that your overall wheel diameter might be a little bit smaller on the 27.5, but with a larger tire means you can run a softer tire. So you can get a relatively smooth ride still out of that 27 and a half. Um, on this particular bike, so the Stance 29.2, we're looking at a Canadian price tag of $22.99. Now I've just been on the US website and they're still not even listing 2024 options in this bike. They're actually showing 2022 and 2023 versions heavily discounted in the States. In Canada, um, it seems like this must have been a higher selling bike. The fact that we were able to get our hands on this 2024 and even with those discounts included if this bike was available in the states and if i was a customer after you hear about all of the upgrades that this bike gets um, in features and geometry um, i still would probably choose to spend more to get this bike than a discounted um, 23 in the states or at least for some people there are some people that yeah, the uh, money savings may be worth it. Um, so $22.99 in Canada. Uh, another thing with numbers, this is 33.8 pounds. So that's actually measured, weighed in the shop, uh, a size medium with 29 inch wheels and completely stock out of the box, including not having pedals, which is just the way that this bike ships. Uh, other thing to do with numbers, the old stance had 120 millimeters of rear suspension. This new stance has 125 millimeters of rear suspension. They even give a tiny little decal on the back there saying 125 millimeters. So five more millimeters of rear travel. The fork on this bike now has 140 millimeters of travel compared to the old model which had 130. So this bike has gained a little bit, almost uh, imperceivable, I would say, on the trail, five millimeters of rear travel. Maybe the 10 mils of extra travel on the fork will mean something, but they're probably getting close to the limits of what this 
flex point rear suspension can actually make sense of. We'll talk about that a bit more as I'm talking about features. So, $22.99 in Canada, 200 bucks cheaper than last year. Uh, some stale sale bikes still remaining in these from 23 or beyond, um, which may or may not be a great value for you. Uh, we even have some 2023s that we're going to be discounting even more heavily now that uh, this first of the 2024s has showed up. Um, so coming up, what I'm going to be doing is going into a lot more of the details, both the specifications and the angles uh, on this bike and doing some comparison with the previous version because the Stance has been an incredibly popular uh, value trail bike in previous years and so I think a lot of people are somewhat aware of that bike and may also be somewhat aware of uh, of what some of the shortcomings were and then you'll see that a lot of those shortcomings um, have been resolved. Um, we also have some new things on here. We're looking at a completely new for 2024 drivetrain, the Shimano Qs, so there's some discussion to do with that. Um, Tires, dropper posts, uh, there's all sorts of things that are new on this bike compared to old versions. So that is what I'm going to be covering next, is the details. So if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe, do all those things. Um, this is pretty much the, uh, the thing we got going on here. We do a bunch of bike reviews, they're not so much getting on a bike and going for a ride, but it is a case of getting in close, showing you and talking about the details things that matter, things that don't matter, things that add value, things that maybe uh, are a detriment to a bike. But we get up close, we show you the things on the bikes, and I especially like doing it on bikes like this that tend to get um, almost passed over, I would say, in the mountain bike media. They all love talking about the $12,000 uh, Ferrari bicycles, but they don't want to talk about the Honda bicycles. Um, so that's what we do here. If you like that sort of idea, um, yeah, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, please, because uh, it does help other people to sort of find this video down the road if they're searching for their next value bike or anything else that they might be talking about. So with those uh, housekeeping things out of the way, I will go over the details. So once again, we're on 29 inch wheels, a great choice of tires on this bike. Maxxis Dissector 29 by 2.4 is what's on the rear and that's with an XO casing. That means a relatively lightweight casing on the tire. What you can't tell, but what I can tell you and promise you is that inside that valve is not an inner tube. It is uh, air and some tubeless sealant. Giant is one of the few companies who actually um, equip their price point bikes with tubeless tires um, and with the sealant in the box so that we can set them up tubeless. What that means to you is A, you get a high performance tire, you're going to have really good grip with this, but you also get to get the most out of the tire by riding a little bit softer pressure and not worrying about getting pinch flats. Another part of getting that performance out of the tire is the fact that these rims are 30 millimeters wide, so you're getting a proper modern wide rim and that helps these 2.4, 2.5, 2.6 inch wide tires to actually perform properly. and. Uh, give you really good traction, grip for cornering, braking, climbing through technical stuff. So um, it is a well thought out tire rim combo um, and something that I'm happy to see. So we have a dissector on the rear. The idea with a dissector is that it's a relatively fast rolling tire, still with some good cornering knobs. On the front, we step on up to one of the most popular tires of all time, the Minion DHF, still a Maxxis tire in that 2.5 inch width. That is common to have a wider front tire than rear because it is common to not want your front tire to wash out. We have one of the most proven front tire tire treads out there. And once again, set up tubeless. So you are going to get the true performance out of that tire um, because it can be ridden soft enough to really have it uh, mold to the ground. I ever so briefly touched on this. This is a Shimano Q's drivetrain on this bike. So on the old version, they had a 10 speed Shimano Dior. On this one, I would say is of equal quality, the Shimano Q's. We went from an 1146 on that last year's Dior to an 1148. 
that those numbers I'm talking about is the 11, the smallest tooth there, the 46 or 48, the biggest tooth there, and that gives you an indication of how, how broad your gear range is. So not only have we switched from Dior to Q's, we have increased the gear range on this 2024 version. Um, as we look at this detail, this is one of the standouts of the new version of this bike. That is a through axle. The previous version of this bike was using a traditional quick release. A through axle is a nice fat axle that actually goes in from this brake side, non-drive side, and screws directly into that black stuff there. And what that does is gives you uh, absolute location of your rear wheel for one thing, so you can't um, sort of misalign your wheel in the frame. That's great for getting your brakes to align without rubbing. But it also means that you get some torsional connection in your rear end in this sort of swing arm part of your bike it is using the hub then as a structural piece so that you don't get, um, or so that you can reduce the torsional flex in the back of your bike. Um, I would say it's also stepped up from a 141 quick release. That is the, the distance from inside here to inside over there. It is now boost 148 millimeters. So it is totally modern, upgradable, um, and worthy of upgrading as we look at a bunch of the other details you'll see what i mean um, this shimano q's drivetrain just so you know because a lot of people aren't familiar with it it is basically getting to the point where it crosses over in quality with the dior level stuff uh, the fact that there was and is a 10-speed dior and also this 11 or 10-speed q's is an indication we also have a clutch on this. So that clutch is an integral part. Clutch off, we get easy movement of the bottom of our derailleur cage. Clutch on, things stiffen up. That is all stuff that we see on performance or expect from performance parts. And that all integrates to reduce how much your chain can bounce up and down with this stronger spring down here. That combined with the narrow wide tooth profile that we have on this Q's chain ring. All these things add up to a very functional one by drivetrain. So that just means you're not gonna be riding down the trail and have your chain bounce off here. You're not gonna have your chain bouncing around on your cassette. And that is one thing that this Q's system is actually going to be a little bit better than uh, the old Dior system, and that is because of a thing called, I'll try and show you, Link Glide. So Link Glide is a new thought that uh, Shimano has basically put in to this series of drivetrains that includes all of these Q's drivetrains, but they do it also in some uh, chosen higher end drivetrains. And Link Glide uh, will apply to Q's and Dior and XT um, link glide drivetrains and what it does is it gives you more complete tooth profiles on your cassette here. It actually uses a thicker material um, and a slightly different chain, slightly different profile of things that are happening up here. All of these things are going to combine together um, and are designed to give you a longer lasting drivetrain. So I think that a lot of this came about because they were trying to design things for e-bikes and then they realize this will be a great thing for a lot of people having longer lasting drivetrains. You're not gonna go through chains as quickly, you're not gonna wear through cassettes as quickly, or your chain ring here. The, it is almost all net benefit as far as um, the value, all those sorts of things. The one thing I would say is part of the design is a, a more complete tooth profile here, which will um, make your shifting just a little bit slower on this compared to Dior. So I think that that's a fair trade-off, having stuff that's gonna last potentially twice as long 
for your shifting taking a split second longer. I touched on it a brief moment ago, but this rear end works on a flex point single pivot uh, suspension design. So this is your main pivot. Your rear wheel is basically moving in a simple arc around that main pivot. The flex point of the name is that this top of the rear um, sort of swing arm section here, that is going to want to rotate in a perfect circle around your main pivot up there, but it's not able to because it's connected with this um, drive link here to drive the rear shock. So the flex part is the fact that this is going to basically have to conform to arcing around that as a pivot point. And so it means that you end up having to use this member of your suspension, having some flex in it to uh, basically work. Now the reason that they do this all is that it reduces your system to only having these three pivots as opposed to having those plus an extra pivot somewhere back here. If we were doing a horse link or doing a single pivot with a, a linkage driven single pivot. Um, so it does a couple things is it reduces complexity, which helps to reduce the price. That's how we're able to get to a $2,300 bike with a bunch of pretty impressive components on it. It on cross country race bikes, we're seeing this system being employed a lot because it ends up being quite efficient and you're saving the weight of some extra bearings. Uh, in this case, like I said, uh, simplicity means money savings. That's the biggest part of it. Um, but what you will tend to get with this is because you have to bend this member, it's going to make the suspension a little bit less plush um, and ride a little bit stiffer. And there is actually an upside to that. And that is when we're talking about price point bikes, we're looking at a Suntour Radon uh, rear shock on this bike. There isn't a heck of a lot of uh, complexity that they're gonna be putting inside the shock the way a higher end Fox or Rock Shocks shock would be. And so this overall suspension design is actually helping to make up for the fact that we don't have something the equivalent of Fox's pro pedal um, system which helps to give you a little bit more pedaling efficiency. So not the plushest thing in the world but efficient and saving you money and I think proven and we're seeing it like I say World Cup level cross-country race bikes um, getting up to pretty close to this amount of travel have been able to use that system and they're seeing it as a net positive. So at 125 millimeters on this bike, that's probably getting close to how much you can expect this part of the bike to actually flex without uh, doing the bike some harm. Um, but happy to see that. I would say I'm interested enough in, in this bike now that it's got uh, the updates, including that through axle, that I would even consider taking one of these and using it as a base project to see just how good you could make a stance because I'm legitimately impressed by this bike. Uh, going back to some things again, we've got an extra five millimeters of travel on the rear end here for travel. We have also lowered, we have this kind of nubbin in the way that this seat tube is shaped. This has been moved lower in the frame. So this size medium has as much seat post uh, insertion as the old extra large would have and that is even taking into consideration that each one of the frames has a shorter uh, collar height above the, above the cranks here. So this is shorter than the old medium and it's got way more seat post insertion depth. So that ties into the fact that each one of these bikes has a longer amount of, a longer dropper length than the previous version. I will press the dropper just because I always like to give you that beautiful sound of a nice topping out in a dropper. Uh, on top of that dropper is this giant Romero saddle. It's a saddle that I am, uh, I've used and I'm pretty happy with, I would say, overall. It's uh, pretty comfortable. Um, 
I would say almost up there with something like a WTB Volt for its comfort. Going back down, we have the Shimano Q's cranks, and these are all suitably short, even on an extra large. They're only going up to 170 millimeters in length. We have proper replaceable uh, chain rings on here. Uh, no longer sort of a proprietary thing because this is in the Shimano family of components. That means a little bit uh, easier replacement. Even though you're going to wear that out much slower than anything previously, uh, you'll be able to replace it separately because it's Shimano. I'll step around the other side to show you that there is also a change down here. The old stance had a press fit bottom bracket. We now have a threaded bottom bracket. I'll just give you an idea from this side of the bike what that linkage all looks like there. That is an alloy link at the top there as well. Very nicely sculpted. I think that has changed a fair bit since the old version. It looks uh, pretty high tech. We have some really nicely done uh, cable guiding. So the cable routing is uh, pretty sophisticated on here. We have these Shimano MT200. So it's a two piston, basically entry level Shimano hydraulic disc brake. One improvement over the previous version of the stance. We keep on talking about improvements that they've made. This is now a 180 millimeter rotor on the brack and on the front, the old stance had a 160 millimeter uh, rotor on the rear. So um, although we still have the same relatively cheap brakes, we get a little bit of uh, increased rear brake performance out of having a 180 millimeter rotor. As we step forward looking at things, once again, that um, Suntour Radon rear shock, it is an air shock. So that means that you will be able to adjust the air pressure to get the right amount of sag, no matter your body weight. Uh, and then that red knob there, that is your rebound adjustment. So you do get the basics of suspension design. I would just from sitting on this bike and sort of uh, jumping up and down on it, it's not the smoothest thing in the world, but it is what it is at this sort of price point. We have improved uh, hardware at the grommets where the internal cable routes, cable routing happens. So that's nice to see. It was just rubber plugs that were pushed in there. We now have actual um, threaded little bolts that hold these in place. And uh, yeah, it cleans things up a fair amount. Once again, showing that nice link there. This is one of two colors in this uh, stance 29.2. The other color is black. Uh, I didn't talk about, there is also a stance 29.1. We are not bringing that bike in because it is, is a SRAM SX equipped bike. We are not fans of SRAM SX. Um, I would much prefer myself to ride a bike with this Q's system. And if I wanted to spend the extra money to go up to the stance one, I would personally blow my entire budget of that difference between them and just upgrade those brakes to something at the Dior level. Um, the brakes on the stance one is one of the improvements. It goes from these 200 series two piston brakes to a 400 series um, four piston brakes. But I think that I would, like I say, I would step up to a 6,000 series Dior level four piston brake with the extra money if I desperately wanted a better version of this bike. Um, and otherwise, besides the brakes, that stance one gets a slightly better version of this giant in-house uh, fork. I'm just gonna step back. Looking at the frame again, there is another thing that's been added. We of course have water bottle mounts on the down tube. We also have these accessory mounts up here. So we are starting to see a few um, tools and things like that. My camera will not, there we go. Um, we're starting to see a few things that you can get um, as far as accessories that'll mount underneath the top tube there and take advantage of uh, that position sort of 
brazed on bolts. Looking at some details here. So I'm gonna step back and just talk about a couple of the geometry changes. So if you're not familiar, we have key things on a bike. Seat tube angle. This is one and a half degrees steeper, more modern than the previous stance. Head tube angle is now down to 65 and a half degrees. That is two degrees slacker than the previous stance. The reach number, which is essentially this sort of horizontal thing here, has increased in the neighborhood of 15 to 30 millimeters, depending like from the smallest end to the largest end of these bikes. That is all going to mean that these bikes ride um, more appropriate to their sizing and they're basically all designed around having a 50 millimeter stem on there now. So geometry is, uh, I would say, bang on for this level of bike is catering to a new rider or an intermediate rider. And I think these geometry changes will give you a proper modern geometry riding experience without it being so modern that it actually starts working against you. What I mean by that is, is you get on a bike as an intermediate rider with too slack of a head tube angle, so your, your front wheel is way far out in front, you can actually end up doing yourself more harm than good by really needing to have expert level technique to weight the front tire properly in corners and for your bike to not feel like it just wants to wander around on you. So I think this 65 and a half degrees gives you the benefit of the slackness, but doesn't require of you being a super expert rider. Same thing with this seat tube angle. So the more straight up and down that is, the more centered on the bike you're gonna be. That is great for descending and for being in a more suitable position if you're sort of pedaling and then just out of the saddle a bit to go around a corner on flatter terrain. But if that gets too steep, too modern, um, and you're not riding really steep terrain, um, steep climbs, you can find that that steeper position will weight your hands that much more on the grips there. So this, I think, gives you the benefit without going overboard and basically having an entry-level bike that's catering to a super hardcore uh, skill level. So, uh, I'm, if you can't tell, I'm a fan of just about everything that has been done on this bike. As we step up front here, we're looking at a tapered head tube, which then goes hand in hand with this fork having a tapered steer tube. That gives us good stiffness, torsional stiffness in the front end of the bike that things aren't gonna be able to sort of flex side to side. We have very modern handlebars. Now these are a 35 millimeter clamp. Once again, taking um, inspiration from what happens on the high end bikes, a short 50 millimeter stem. Once again, that's what's happening on proper bikes. Um, suitably wide handlebars, 780 millimeters wide. This new dropper remote for the dropper seat post has some nice texturing on there and a nice uh, wide paddle so you're, it's going to be comfortable on your thumb. Um, as if anybody's watched a lot of my videos, you will see that anytime you see these grips on a bike, you'll hear me bitch about them. Uh, I just, that'll be, if this was my bike, the first thing I would do is just take those grips off and replace them with something that is both a lock-on and just this to me they're just mushy but without being comfortable in your hands there is nothing that redeeming about those grips except for the fact that it probably costs giant about two cents to put them on here and they're trying to watch their uh, pennies and nickels when designing this bike here's an example of the brake levers driving those uh, mt200 level brakes we put them way inboard from the grip so you can still do one or two finger braking with that long lever. Um, if you aren't a local to our shop, if you ever get this bike and that lever is pushed up against the grip, that just demonstrates that you might be dealing with a shop that doesn't have a clue what's going on with bike setup. The fork that's on this bike is a giant in-house um, fork model. It is the Giant STL 34. So the 34 means 34 millimeter uh, thick stanchions on here. 
It is truly a Giant original product, not Giant just putting their name on something by Suntour. Um, it's got, I always look at this because it's an interesting feature, the way they've sort of uh, hollowed out their arch. Um, 140 millimeters of travel, it is a boost fork. It is an air fork, so once again under that cap there you have uh, an air valve so that you can adjust the air pressure so that this will uh, suit your weight and potentially um, if you have a preference about riding a softer or a firmer fork. Under the other side we have a little uh, sort of swing lever there that just changes it from being open and plush in the position it is now to being essentially locked out in the opposite position. And then Underneath down here, that red knob that we're looking at, that is a rebound adjustment lever. So this is giving you as much adjustment as a Fox performance level fork, which would be a $1,000 plus fork. Um, not quite as plush in this case, it's not that sophisticated, but it's a pretty reasonable and pretty reasonably light um, fork. And I think really good at this sort of price point. So, we have a proper modern geometry on this bike. This bike in a size medium, just to give some context here, would have a reach of 445 millimeters. So if you want to compare that to some other bikes, or 470 in a size large. Um, this will leave you feeling not too stretched out and not struggling to keep your weight centered. Um, which means keeping weight on your front wheel and not washing out your front wheel. Do I have other things I want to talk about on this bicycle? I basically bring my cheat sheet with me and then I write down some of the key numbers and I was looking at last year's. Um, I think we've covered it all. So, two different models um, as far as wheel size within this Stance 2, a Stance 29 2 or just a Stance 2 which has 27.5 inch wheels. Um, extra small through extra large. I'll give you an idea in the middle sizes and you can work up and down from there how these sizes work. I would say a medium is probably going to be quite ideal for somebody in the 5'6", five, 5'7", five, to about 5'10 range. A large from that 5'10 to 6 foot 1 range. If you're used to an old school bike with a long stem, this distance between your saddle and your handlebars will feel a tad compressed to you when you're riding in the saddle. But when you're out of the saddle, your weight is going to be centered and you're not going to find your front wheel washing out. So if you're coming from an old, old bike, be prepared for some change. This rear shock is extremely simple, but it'll do the job of being able to be adjusted for your weight and to give you appropriate rebound for that um, spring strength of adjusting that weight. And then otherwise, you're going to be looking at quite an efficient suspension design and an efficient positioning on the bike. If you know of any bikes that are out there from other companies that would be good competitors to this, I'm going to guess that in the States this is going to be about $1,700, bucks, maybe $1,600. Um, let me know. I'm always curious to know what people notice out there. Um, at this particular price point, it becomes awfully hard for anybody other than Giant to compete. So, this is the long-winded Graham talking about bikes standing inside Bike Bros in Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. If you're in the area, come by, let us help you buy a bike. If you're not in the area, get on a flight and fly here and say hello. Um, or just use this information to help you buy a bike at home. Uh, happy trails, and we will see you in the next one.